Hey y'all, today on Camo Life, we're hunting elk in Montana and the forecast is calling for rain. From the headquarters of Ranger Joe's at the gates of Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia, we bring you The Camo Life with David and Tina Peavy. Living the camo life, well, that's the life for me. I'm living the camo life, and I'm blind to river tree. Gone away, the worry, gone away, the stress from working this nine to five. Just love it, can't get enough of it. I'm living this camo life. Yes, I'm living that camo life. Well, the boys have been out in Wyoming shooting prairie dog and antelope all week, and I'm flying into Butte, Montana, where we're going to meet up for my very first elk hunt. Yeah, this year I drew a special area elk tag for Montana, and I was really stoked about that. But Tina didn't draw one, so she was going to be stuck to hunting just public lands. The good news is that Montana's got some of the best public elk hunting anywhere, and we've got her matched up with some of the best outfitters in the business. The guys from Stockton out there live for this stuff. You don't look at me. You never look at me. The first stop is to Stockton Outfitters, where we're going to meet up with Mark Schutte and his family take care of a little paperwork before we head up to the mountains with our guide for the week, Matt Rowe. While the boys have been gone, I've had a lot of time on my hand. I've been shooting and shooting every day. So David's in for a little surprise. Now it looks like that girl means business. When we finally make it up to the top of the mountain, and wouldn't you know, we've got elk everywhere and they're bugling like crazy, but we're running out of daylight and we don't have time to go after them. So Matt just told me we're gonna have to sleep on this tonight. It is gonna be a long night. We get in here this morning and everything is going just like it should be. The elk are there, they're bugling back to us. It's just perfect. Coming down the mountain, I mean, it had my adrenaline just pumping. My heart was racing, and it was just getting louder and louder as we got closer and closer.
we got in there and all of a sudden the wind went to swirling around and the elk started going away from us. And I didn't have any idea how quickly elk can cover some ground, but there is no way we were going to catch up with them. So we decided we were just going to come out and try to go around and head them off from the other direction. come around the mountain and our elk are gone. So that means we've got to find more elk. I see a lot of walking in our future. Okay, we just spotted a grouse down here, so we're gonna sneak down here and try to get up there to it. They tell me it's just like eating chicken. They call them mountain chickens up here, so let's sneak down here and see if we can get a shot at one. Looks like Tina's got a new Hoyt dialed in. Whoa, it's a monster. <laughs> when you're hunting Montana, it's not like hunting the swamps of South Georgia. It is wide open country and we've got a lot of ground to cover. So we get out on this ridge and there's just elk everywhere and they're bugling all over it. Matt said he's gonna set up about 100 yards behind us and start calling and try to work these bulls to us. So I'm tucked up under this pine tree and I'm just waiting and we've got these three bulls that are answering us back, I mean call for call and I just know it's going to happen. We've got this bull down here, we can hear him pacing back and forth and he is just going crazy. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him call and they're answering him back and it's just awesome. We've got a bull down here and we can tell he's just, he's pacing back and forth and he's just minutes from just coming on up the hill to us 
And all of a sudden they stopped. And the next thing we knew, they were about 600 yards over or across from us on a ridge. They're heading out the same way they did yesterday, but at least it's starting to look like a pattern. And if they try this trick again tomorrow, we've got them. Well, during the slow part of the day, we decided to take a nap when we got woke up to the sound of wolves. That's the one sound you do not want to hear when you're out elk hunting. So we decided that this would be a good time as any to head out for the day and hope that when we get back in the morning that there's at least some elk still here. We'll be right back with more of The Camo Life. Even though we've been hunting hard, we've been putting on mile after mile up and down these mountains, these wolves moved in and that was it. We didn't see another deer or elk anywhere around. So as bad as I hated it, I was heading back to Georgia empty handed and it was gonna be up to David if we were gonna have any elk meat this year. As I dropped Tina off at the airport and headed across the state for my hunt outside of Roy, Montana, I couldn't help but think about Tina and how hard she had worked for this and how ready she was and what a heartbreaker it was that she had to go home empty handed. If we're gonna have any elk meat this year, it's up to me, I'm gonna have to get over here and get it done. But at least I know friends with good properties. We're meeting up with my buddy Vaughn Esper with Western Skies Land Company. Hey, David. Hey, Mr. Vaughn, how are you? I'm wonderful. How's David? Pretty good, how pretty was good. Your trip? Hey, it wasn't bad at all. Good. What do you bad. think of this country? It is beautiful. In this pretty country? Goodness. This a little is, different from where you were. This is the kind of stuff we're going to be hunting this, this rolling. Wow. This is it. David Chad Court, he's going to be helping us out. How you doing, Chad? Yeah, he knows this country too and okay. uh, knows how good elk hunting it is. Uh, it's a phenomenal country. Yeah? It's a lot more open. Uh, even in the timber, you'll be able to see the elk. Uh, we'll be able to hear lots of elk bugling and you'll be able to see lots of elk. Is that one bugling right there? Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> oh, pretty much. I, I believe I may have found my new home, Vaughn. I'll tell you, you'll mm. love this country. Wish Tina could have come with you, but you'll yeah. maybe get her out here next year. But this is phenomenal country, absolutely phenomenal. You need a, a stepson that eats a lot and is completely worthless for everything <laughs> except killing stuff? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they have to adopt you. Yeah, but, uh, this is gorgeous. You'll like this. Yeah, it is. It is. You get your stuff and we'll uh, get you organized. All right. It's a nice place here. I like this cabin. No, oh, it's a nice cabin. Yeah, you'll like it. Comfort's a home. <laughs> we had the opportunity several years ago to buy a, a large ranch out here. And we bought this ranch with the idea of, of developing it into a, a phenomenal property that people could come out and buy uh, parcels of and have some phenomenal hunting property, have some great family property, getaway property, horseback riding property, whatever they want. It is in uh, the heart of central Montana. We have a resident herd here anywhere from three to 500 elk. Uh, they have uh, have developed very well here. They used to be a plains animal. Uh, they have come back to the plains and they have adapted very well. We have wheat fields, we have alfalfa fields, we have timber, have water, we have everything that makes this a perfect habitat for the elk population. Also have mule deer, whitetail, uh, four species of, of upland game birds, turkey. So it's really a honey mecca. Well, you know, when Dave got here, I told him, I said, you know, these elk are not acting like they have been. They're, this is not normal year for them. They're bunched up in big bunches. Uh, we haven't been pulling, I mean, the, the elk we pulled away from the herds have been satellite bulls here and there. It's been pretty tough uh, because of the year and, and everybody's saying the same thing. They're just bunched up in big groups. Uh, I told him if we can get any bull to come in, uh, especially right now, the way things are late in the season. With the elk grouped up in these big herds like this, it's great for video, but it makes it almost impossible to get within bow range of them. 
I mean, with that many sets of eyeballs, there's no way you're gonna ambush them. I mean, you're not gonna sit there with all those cows walking all around you to get that shot of Big Boy, and there's no way he's leaving that herd. So our only chance is to get out there and with a little bit of luck, maybe we can call off one of these satellite bulls and get him within bow range. We'll be right back with more of The Camo Life. Headed out through the woods, I was trying to wrap my head around what it would be like to potentially see two or three hundred elk. And as we topped that hill, I saw a sight that I know I'll remember the rest of my life. Get them to come up here. They're moving away. They broke off from the herd. We might be able to get them up here. 